Sunday morning. It actually stopped raining, and it's part of the way warm, so that's always a good sign. Uh, but I got a project that I'm getting ready to do. I'm going to pull the subs out of the Jeep real quick, and after I get those pulled out, I'll be back. I don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks I'ma stack bricks up Build what I want to make Yo, I got a lot of shit to say So I'ma do this every day I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave Six feet deep but Well guys, we got the subs pulled out Found an issue I don't know if you can see it But yeah, you can see that plane is there I got one port a little lower than the other. Yeah, that sucks. So that means I'm gonna have to get in there and try to get that port lifted up. I don't know how right yet, but I can't believe it dropped, honestly. I ain't even gonna lie. Um, it's kind of weird. But yeah. One one port dropped down. It looks like they have both went down. Yeah, I see. I see slide marks on the other one. It looks like where it went down. But that one is way too close. Uh, it could have been affecting my windiness a little bit. I don't know. I got to get them lifted back up. Uh, I can tell they both dropped. When I put them in that baffle, I literally measured top to bottom and had them the same distances between the top of the shell and the bottom of the shell so seeing that they have both dropped i need to get them lifted up and then i'm gonna have to run me a big old bead of pl3x around the base of the ports honestly it's probably my fault i thought i put a little glue on them when i put them in there i guess i didn't um so yeah yeah it's probably jerry's bad but anyway i might even just put some e6000 on there but the point is yeah they have went down probably definitely affected the output um because you know by the port dropping in basically what it does is lowers the chamber volume and gives you more port area per square inch uh, i ain't gonna say it affects tuning but it kind of does um, I see, yeah, I got to get them up, get some glue on there, pull two subs out of the wife's edge. And uh, I just got a brilliant idea. Her FIs are such a pain to put in there. I think I can almost pull out the teams. And if I can get the teams out, I can get two regular OEM Genesis back in there. Um, so that would be nice. But yeah, I got a little bit of work to do. Like I said, it still looks like it could open up and pour down raining at any minute. But, I mean, I'm just trying to take advantage of the weather that's here, you know. And it was a pain to pull them subs out. But I did it on time lapse for you guys. Uh, yeah, I found out how to use the time lapse. So, you know, that whole time lapse was from the start to having all four subs pulled out. But I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, guys, I got them. Look how far they went down. Like, you can tell. They went down a ways. Um, I said to hell with uh, trying to break them off. I'm just going to put my speaker terminal was like right there, kind of in front of them on each side because here's a sub here with the, the terminal was being right there. It's got to be easy to get to with the drill. Uh, a sub here, where my hand's at, one right here is going to block them. You know, screw the dumb shit. I ain't got time for all that. But right now, I got to get glue uh, in here. Yeah, y'all know what I'm doing, guys. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get try to find some glue to put on these things. I'll be back. All right, guys, I got Debbie in there. Right now, she's just going around with some rubbing alcohol. 
91% isopropyl. Cleaning that base uh, just around the ports. There is a little dust back here, and uh, at the very back of the baffle, there's some dust. Now, I'm not 100%, I'm no genius on this, but I have been told if you have like dust standing in one area, that you kind of need a 45 there. Am I gonna do that today? Probably not. But I'm just saying, that's what I've heard. Uh, I don't know, that might just be an old wives tale, but it makes sense. Now that she got that clean. Got some glove. Uh, we're gonna, here you go, honey, you need hey. one or two? One for now. All right, now what she got to do is put a glove on. I don't like getting this stuff under my fingernails. Right. I gave her a tube of clear E6000. It usually stays in the glove box of the old Jeep here. And she's going to run around that base of the ports with it. Um, and that'll glue them in place. Big old fat bead. Look at that. Did she put them there? I'll, I'll zoom in for you guys. Big old fat bead. I'm pretty sure them ports were leaking as easy as I got them to lift up. And I router cut the hose. They fit tight when I put them in, but yeah, you know, I probably just didn't get enough glue on them. I don't think you did put any. Yeah, probably not. They don't look like it. Yeah, that's see, that's a Jerry mistake, guys. Easily overlooked. There's a lot of things easily overlooked here. This ain't really flowing. But anyway, guys, I'll be back. asking yourself, Jerry. Why the hell are you having a woman in there doing uh, your work? Deb likes helping out with shit like this. Uh, she really does think that it's fun and she likes being involved and learning more and more about base head things. And yeah, I, I don't even know how, but cut my hand all up. Didn't want blood on the baffle. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, Deb does enjoy doing this, you know. Um, I think it's a part of when people see the blazer and the Jeep, she has ever right in the world to say, I helped build this. And she did. I mean, you all see it here. She's helped with everything we build. So that's why she's uh, in there helping because she just kind of enjoys it and gives her bragging rights. Anyway, <laughs> peace guys. Well, I no longer have a charger. Man, guys, I was back here working uh, on this, getting them things out, you know, like that. I look over at the fucking blazer. I saw a smoke rolling out of the back where I had this thing and uh, it was hot. I had to use a towel to pick it up. But luckily, I was just able to... Uh, basically, I was just able to, like, unplug it, grab it with a towel, and uh, bring it over here. So all is good, but I don't have a charger no more. And it's been a pretty good charger. Um, Deb hooked it up backward one day because she wasn't sure which was positive on her battery. And I had to learn her the red to red, you know, code, but ooh, it's still hot. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work after this one, guys. Oh, thankfully we caught that. That could have been catastrophic. That could have been bad. But everything in here appears to be all right. Uh, anyway, yeah. I think that uh, I need to go back to my taking a break and reflect and get ready for this. The wife's talking to our daughter. Like we got her this cat eight years ago. I was an anti-cat person all the way. And uh, when she moved to California, she took the cat with her on the plane. So that's how much she really liked the cat. And the cat got ill. She, the cat was still young and it wasn't even eight yet. But it was going to cost so much money to try to save her. I just didn't have it. So uh, the cat held on. They gave it 48 hours. It actually lived four days past that. But it passed yesterday. So it was like a part of our family, you know. 
we really did like that cat. I miss that cat. I missed it when she took it to California. I mean, I'd still like dogs, but the cool thing about a cat is, and what won me over, the cat would just come up to me and be like, hey, pet me. I pet it for a minute and be like, all right, I'm done, and just go on about his business. I really like that about cats, but. So that's what we got going on today. Daughter's heartbroken over it, but, you know, I mean, at least she was with the cat when the cat passed is all I can keep thinking. But anyway, I can't believe my shit almost caught on fire. But anyway, I'm going to go back on my break and uh, I'm trying to figure out what the hell happened here. I mean, this thing's got a, apparently it's showing a fuse here, somewhere in there. Yeah, I mean, oh, it even had an extra, or no, I guess that spot for the extra there, but why didn't the fuse work? <laughs> That's what I keep asking. Why didn't the fuse work? <laughs> but, good God. Yeah, it smells terrible. Oh, well, another $50 down the drain. So, what I got here, that's some dowel rod, quarter inch, and uh, I got some old uh, Gorilla Glue there. And all we do to fill these holes in is since I drilled the holes, quarter inch, that's, that's it. Lovely. Like, you know, Gorilla Glue, wood glue. I usually use tight bond, but I couldn't find. We bought a case and it got misplaced. Yeah. I had a case that was somewhere that's missing. But, I mean, does it really don't get much. Tighter than that. Easier than this, because they fit so good that you literally kind of have to, to tap them in with a hammer. Probably would have helped if he'd have brought a towel. Yeah. But... <laughs> kind of you see what's going on I mean it's not that it's not that difficult you know, spread that spread that glue out real good gives it a nice seal I mean it's yeah it's gonna be good and sealed in there all right guys I'm gonna get back to work and they are done so dowel rods glued in when I put this threaded rod, this threaded rod is quarter inch. That's the diameter by 20, 20 threads per inch. So quarter by 20, but you know, it's cut kind of long. Now I measured each one of these pieces of dowel rod that I cut to a two and a quarter inch because three layers of three quarter, that's two and a quarter inch. So you know, with it flush here, it's gonna be half ass flush on the inside. It's over behind the port. Nobody gonna see it come through there. If I'm so inclined at some point, I can literally just um, throw a little bit of paint on it. I'm not super worried about that. If you look at this earlier in this video, you will see where uh, some of my back wall didn't even have white paint on the wood because of uh, the ports in front of it. And now that the ports are back in place, we're all good. Um, I really need to get in there and paint the ports again, but I'm not super worried at this point. I just want this thing playing. But anyway, I'm just showing you like, you can't even, I mean, if you look right there, you can see where everything has came through. But when that sub is in that hole and that hole, you ain't gonna see nothing back there. I still have some washers in there that I need to get out on each side. Um, from where I pulled everything out. Got my little nut holder. Lord knows what we'll find under there. <laughs> but anyway, guys, it's about all we got going. The battery on this beast here, she's up to 15.9. We can close that off. Make sure it's all good and closed up. Um, charger died. I got to get on Amazon and uh, order a damn battery charger. But, yeah, it happens. It's been a good charger. I've had that thing a few years, and it's only 50 bucks. So, I don't know what else I'm going to have time to do today. I know the wife wants to get back in there and uh, 
put another layer of glue around them ports real quick. And with all the wires out of the way, she can actually get all the way behind them now where she couldn't get before with a little glue. So anyway, guys, I'm, I'm going to cut off for here now. Who knows? I dig it. <laughs> she getting way back in there. And E6000, that's some strong stuff, guys. I better hold subwoofers together and to keep them ports in place. But... I just got to move my boobies around the brackets. Yep, yeah, and make sure your boobies don't fall in the holes. <laughs> but anyway, guys, it's all going good. We've got quite a bit done today for uh, it being a day. The weather was terrible. So... It still looks like it could rain at any minute, but I think it's early enough that once she gets that done, I'm going to close the Jeep up. And uh, I'll probably move the fiberglass stuff out of my back porch. Even though we're high humidity, I mean, the humidity's got to be pretty high now because hell, it was raining, you know, like 9 o'clock this morning. But I'll get um, the, the door pods for the blazer out here and uh mix up a couple cups of fiberglass resin and some chop mat out here and uh we'll like reinforce the insides of them and that way we can move further with working on them so it is what it is guys but we'll find something to do yeah so i got uh well me and dad both reinforced the back sides of this glass here you can see here where we had uh put chop mat down all right, my hand was in the damn way but you can see where we got all that reinforcement chop mat <coughs> guys literally it didn't take no time at all brought my seahorses and a little table piece look at that plastic fork stuck on there um i like to buy plastic forks to, you can get them at dollar tree really cheap and uh they work great to stir fiberglass for it with and them little packs of cups you can't see nothing in here, kinda. But I took the the Team 15s out, which uh, the G2 Team Series subs is basically just uh, a Genesis motor and basket with different soft parts in it. And uh, I had four of them. It's the first subs I ever got from Paul. And we did it that way to get two ohm. So I could have two ohm subs. Because the 15 inch Genesis only comes in a dual four. I want a dual two. So, anyway, I wound up strapping my amps where each amp was at a half ohm each and uh, running the regular OEM dual fours. But, you know, I've been blowing some amps because, well, you know, basically when you take six four ohm loads and uh, wire it all parallel, you're going to get 0.67 to two amps strapped. 0.33 per amp so anyway uh that's why i got rid of my two of my oems to kyle hart down in texas and uh, i had two of my teams and the uh edge so i took them out put two of the regular genesis in the edge now in my tool room i have all four of my team subs and i have two team recones so i gotta build two subs now that ain't that bad um but we did get that swap done and what time is it babe 158 it's 158 i didn't even start today till 11 like i started this video around 11 o'clock uh, me and deb work really good together extremely fast together and today we haven't even really argued about anything so it's been going super smooth guys um usually me and deb will fight when we doing stuff together but so it keeps our relationship going strong that fighting and bickering but anyway i might sit my little table back up out here and drag out a motor and a basket and get it cleaned up so i can maybe build a subwoofer tonight when i'm not doing anything peace out guys oh look at jangle -a this is what i got i got this thing prepped uh you can see everything is clean you can see six thousand pushing out down there where i did the connection for the uh basket to the motor because this did come in from paul at g2 it was just a basket and i believe if we look at the motor here 
yeah, cut out 11, 3.375. So it's definitely is a 12 basket or a motor. <clears throat> it's all good. They're all the same. There you can see some of that clear E6000 poking out. But uh, it took me a couple flapper discs because this thing was just, it had so much glue and surround left. It had spider left in there. Uh, I literally went deep in my thumb with a flapper disc. Them things spin so quick, like it just left a big hole. <laughs> Deb was out here playing nurse, hooked me up. So I got this thing here, like straight up ready for recone. Uh, I am going to blow it off one more time, but I wiped all this down with alcohol, get everything ready. Um, it'll be later. I ain't going to do it right now, but... Anyway, that's probably all I have for today. You can tell by looking. What time is it? 3 o'clock, basically? It is 2.52, and it dropped down to 57. 2.52. It's dropped uh, about 11 degrees since we've been out here. And, you know, it, like, was raining this morning. Then it got sunny. Now it's, like, dreary. It's around 3 o'clock. We got a shit ton of stuff done today. But... Guys, I'm straight up like, I'm ready to call it quits for today. Okay, it's getting cold. It dropped 11 degrees. Uh, it's sunny. or I mean, it went from sunny to dreary. And yeah, I'm done. Look, this is a brand new flapper disc, guys. Brand new. And trying to eat off that old, like, glue and surround. Yeah, it just kills them. I actually took it under there and like, ground on my vice for a minute trying to clean yeah it ain't gonna work but anyway i'll be back tomorrow yeah I spit raps like a heart attack Fast fatal heart impact Past painful scars In fact, I blast tasteful bars And past I back up my actions Fact, don't ask, grab reactions Jack attack with every word Then act with class as they hear me snap I got nothing to lose Cause I fought and felt the bruise Now I'm not the one confused Call the shots and they produce I ain't lost, I'm finally loose Pick a new so for excuse I need the views to boost me to A new abuse of being used Everybody wants a piece now Y'all can rest in peace Now you're dead to me so peace out Remember you just discreet out Keep ready for defeat now, I'm gonna make you bleed out. Alright, guys, I just did a quick little uh, time lapse of reconing this subwoofer. You guys have seen me do it so many damn times. Right now, I got the cap sitting there with some CA glue. I did get my shim out of there. And uh, it's a big carbon fiber cap. Under here, you can see, there we go. You know, everything is soldered and Heat strength on my connection, so yeah, I don't know how long that took. It might have took me an hour or so because um, I don't have the right ends for the tensile leads. I have to take this yellow off of here, split that open, put flux in it, crimp it around the tensile leads because this has like the uh, the big dual flat ones, so. I got to put them in there, squeeze this shut, then put flux on the uh, tensile lead sticking out of the end of it and solder it all, heat shrink it. And it's still, I put my gasket on here, clamped it back. Uh, the Genesis normally have a bolt down spider, but these Corey Dean Recones do not. So you just got to CA glue the shit out of it. But I CA glued it, I shimmed it, stuck it down, and then I went back with a needle tip along this edge. And after I got all the way around with that, I hit it with some CA glue, uh, what the hell they call it? What, whatever, activator? Yeah, activator. <laughs> I hit it with some of that. Right now I just have a, some weight on the dust cap. So anyway, guys, let me get this shit edited and uploaded. Peace out.